You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Thursday, the 27th of July, 2017. We see that the S&P 500, and actually everything today, is up. Not only the S&P 500, the Q's, QQQ, gold, and TLT, the 20-year bond fund. Let's see what's going on with the S&P 500. It is trying its best to cross over, going up. On the weekly chart, still hasn't quite happened. When we look at things, we can see that the charts really started sliding sideways all the way back on the week ending the 9th of June. And then the week ending the 21st of July really started the latest uptrend, but it's not been enough yet to give us a crossover on our main indicator, the price percent oscillator. Those of you familiar with the MACD, very similar to that, but more accurate. You can actually compare both within classes and indexes because it uses an absolute, which keeps you from having the problems that you can have with the MACD over time. To know more about it, please listen to the training that we have on the PPO that's available at the website, chartingwealth.com. And again, all that stuff is made available most readily if you subscribe to our daily market review, which costs you absolutely nothing. And along with that, you get our How to Read a Stock Chart video, the layouts that we use at freestockcharts.com and how to get it. And you get all of our worksheets, the trade worksheet, the daily market worksheet, and the weekly worksheet. And folks, those of you who have been doing what we recommend, and that is using those worksheets, filling them out, making use of them, I have received nothing but. I am so glad I did this. It's been the best thing I've ever done to learn how to read these charts and to progress. And it is. So please fill those out. We have lots of good training on how to use all three of those worksheets again at the website chartingwealth.com under training. So what do we see going on? Well, the weekly chart's trying its best to cross over going up. The two-day chart crossed over going up back on the 20th. Again, we don't have confirmation with the big chart yet. It's still in a confirmed down move, so we don't have a trade here yet. But we see continuing to gain energy. PPO's continuing to go up, as is the derivative oscillator. And, of course, what's going on in that four-hour chart? It has actually been sideways and crossed over going down, particularly at the end of the day. And we see that the derivative oscillator has also crossed over going down. So pay attention to that as the charts possibly top off, maybe just for the short term. But again, if it's enough energy to drive that two-day chart over going down, doesn't look like it right now, still going up pretty strongly. But if it is, It'll, of course, pull that over in line with the weekly down chart. So again, if that happens and the two-day chart rotates over going down, looks like the four-hour chart's trying to do that right now, then, of course, we'd have an opportunity for a down trade. We keep wondering how long will these markets go up? They petered out right around sometime in, what was that, uh, The around the 12th of June, slid sideways and down, and then, of course, started building again. So let's continue to watch, see how long this will go on. Back to our weekly chart. What do we see in the NASDAQ 100? It's not as close to crossing over going up as the S&P 500 is. Derivative oscillator is still pretty negative, but we do see the PPO trying to head up, but again, hasn't happened yet. We have the Weekly chart still down, two-day chart up as we tune into that two-day chart. What do we see? Of course, it continues to move. It's sort of been topping out in about the same area, about $144 for the last few days. So we'll see how that ends up. Derivative oscillators continuing to gain energy, and the PPO is continuing to go up. If we tune in a little deeper to that four-hour chart, We see that it has been sliding sideways, but tending up still above the two-day trend line. It has, however, crossed over on the derivative oscillator and has crossed over, well, on the derivative oscillator and on the price percent oscillator. That actually happened first back on the four-hour chart on the afternoon of Tuesday, the 25th. So 
pay close attention to that. Again, the move is, uh, even though it is tending down, it's still above the two-day trend line, well above that weekly trend line. So just pay attention. Keep your eyes out on that, remembering that the biggest chart is down, which means everything being equal, market tends to move in the direction of the biggest chart until and unless that changes. Hasn't changed yet. Keep your eye on this four-hour chart. Okay, we will go back now to the weekly, and we're going to take a look at TLT, the 20-year bond fund. It was up just a little bit, 0.16% for the day. It is still in a confirmed up move on the weekly chart, but again, the price percent, uh, the uh, derivative oscillator switched over. Price percent oscillator seems to be getting close to crossing over going down for the last two weeks running, slipping sideways. We have the formation right now of a spinning top as we've made it through the halfway point ending on Wednesday, of course, for this weekly chart. Means lots of indecision, so pay attention see which way it's going to go. If we do have a weekly vertical crossover, we'll notify everybody that signed up for our text service. If you'd like to receive that, you need to be a subscriber, and we'll have instructions there with the emails you receive every day as to how you can text charting wealth, that one word, to the number 33222. We'll get you signed up and make sure you receive those notices of weekly vertical crossovers. If it occurs, we will let you know. Has not happened yet, but appears to be getting close as we look at that two-day chart, what do we see? It was going up for six days, and then this latest two-day candle is decidedly down, still confirmed down. Derivative oscillator is actually losing energy, even though the price percent oscillator is rotated over, heading down again. So pay attention to that. What's the four-hour chart telling us? Well, it ended the day up a little bit, but of course it crossed over going down, confirmed crossover going down on that candle ending on Tuesday afternoon. So again, we're going to wait and see what happens with that weekly chart if the continued down movement on the four-hour and the two-day is strong enough to cross it over. If it does, it may give us an opportunity for a weekly vertical crossover and a jump into a down trade owned bonds on Monday. This next Monday, we shall wait and see. Lastly, we have gold. Gold up 0.81%. It was our biggest up chart for the day. Gold, of course, is still in a confirmed down move on the weekly chart, having crossed over going down back on the 30th of June. And, of course, it has broken through its weekly trend line. We have a two-day up move in gold. And it's above that. We have actually just about four solid open, well, four so solid up moves, four open green box up moves in gold, which represents, of course, eight days movement. We had that crossover on the two-day chart back on the candle ending on the 24th. That was Monday of July. And we have continued strong up movement in gold on that two-day chart. We'll see just how and when Gold rotates over on the weekly chart, but of course, as you all know, our most important chart is the four-hour chart. It rotated over, and the jumping in point was somewhere around about 116 going up back on the 12th, Wednesday the 12th. What do we see happen? We've seen gold continue to track up. A little bit of pullback we had over these last few days. We saw that third down candle, then a recovery in the afternoon. Those of you who might have jumped out of gold when we started seeing the rollover, don't feel bad. You jumped in around 116 and got up as high as 119, 118 and a quarter and a half. So again, not a bad move in the course of just a few days. What, a couple of weeks maybe? So again, maybe 10 days wonderful. If you did get out, if you didn't, of course, you saw it pop up as high in the afternoon on Wednesday the 26th as over uh, over 120. So pretty good, the high, let's see, 120.15. So again, continue to watch this four-hour chart. It is our number one chart. It's the one ETF that we track that has a chart that time and time again seems to work this small chart over and over and over. 
And again, what makes you feel good is when you can use our traditional method and you see both the four hour and the two day moving in the same direction. Not happening right now, but it gives you even more confidence when that four hour chart is moving in the same direction as both the two day and the weekly. It was happening for a while just a, a few weeks ago. Of course, not happening right now is tracking the two day, but not the weekly. We'll again wait and see just if there's going to be enough movement to pull that weekly over in the up direction. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day on Wednesday as we go into Thursday the 27th. We so appreciate you being with us. We are answering emails today, trying to keep people informed, answering their questions. You have questions, problems, concerns. We're always so glad to hear from you. And we did pay attention to one of you asking us to please make sure that we covered that four-hour chart every day. So we will endeavor to do that on a daily basis. We've been skipping that lately as we've been waiting for some new moves to set up, but we won't do that anymore. See, we listen. We love to hear from you. God bless all the best from the whole team here at ChartingWealth.com.